The Behringer Wing has been out for about four years, and I'm just now getting my hands on one. The X32 is working great, and I'm not one who gets googly-eyed over the latest gadget, but when the guys at Sweetwater offered to let me check out the wing, I couldn't resist. I've now created an entire mix from the ground up using the wing for our Inner Circle subscribers. If you'd like to watch that video, subscribe to Inner Circle using the link in the description. But before you do that, keep watching because I'm about to compare the X32 to the wing so you can decide if it's time for you to upgrade. Just so you know where I'm coming from, I've been using the X32 for the last eight years. I love it so much, I even have a course to help you master the X32 called X32 Mastery. I'll include a link in the description. Considering they were both Behringer products, I was curious how easy it would be to take my experience with the X32 and apply it to the wing. It was not as easy as I thought it would be. I mean, as far as controls go, the channel strip is pretty much identical but that's where the similarities end. All the other controls on this mixer are not anywhere close to the same as the X32, but you know what? It didn't even matter because the screen on the wing is a touch screen. My first time mixing on the wing, I didn't even use the other controls. I did everything from the touch screen. With about a $1,200 difference between the wing and the X32, the touch screen itself is worth the upgrade to me. It sped up and improved my workflow. Now, as time goes on, I'll probably start including some of those other controls in my workflow, but since I didn't find them intuitive right off the bat, the touchscreen saved the day. In case you can't tell, I love the touchscreen on the wing. Now, let me tell you about setting up routing on the wing. It's nothing like the X32. It took me a bit to wrap my head around how to get everything configured for the first time. The X32 uses block and patch routing together to get audio signals where they need to go. I was expecting to see something similar on the wing, but no. Here's what the routing screen looks like. You have three sections, channels, sources, outputs. This is quite a bit different than on the X32 where you have input, AS50, card, XLR, out, aux, P16, and user. I mean, all this is simplified into three sections on the wing. Channels is where you configure the wing's 48 inputs. The left side shows you what is routed to each input. The right side lets you browse from the many places to get your input. You can grab them from one of the eight XLR Midas preamps on the back of the mixer or from your digital snake or from what's coming through the USB audio interface or any of the other 16 options you see on this screen. To assign an input, tap the unlock button, select the channel you want to assign, and then tap the source you want to use for that channel. Pretty easy as long as you're not expecting it to be as complicated as routing on the X32. Now here's where it gets interesting on the sources screen. We have everything we saw on the right side of the input screen, but with a few settings. For each available source, the wing saves the name, icon, color, and polarity settings. This is whether you're using this source on the mixer or not. I mean, that's pretty nice. So on the sources screen, you can go through and configure these settings for all of your available sources. Lastly, the output screen is where you configure all of your outputs, whether it be to the local XLR outputs on the back of your mixer, or your digital snake outputs, or USB outputs, or any of the other 11 options on this screen. Tap the unlock button, then tap the output you want to program on the left, and select your source from the plethora of options on the right. In the end, routing is way easier on the wing. You just have to forget what you knew about routing on the X32 and enjoy the simplicity. <laughs> Once I got it all sorted out, it was smooth sailing. Setting gain, EQ, compression, and gating it was just quick and easy on the wing's touchscreen. And then it came time to set up reverb. I went to the effects screen and expected something similar to the X32, but it wasn't. I mean, on the X32, this is where you program all of your effects settings and what channel or bus that's gonna use that effect. But on the wing, this is simply an overview of the effects that you have loaded into your mixer. All the settings can only be accessed on the channel or bus you have that specific effect loaded into. For example, I loaded in a plate reverb for the insert of bus 13, and that's where I can adjust all the settings for that reverb. Once it's loaded in, you'll see it listed on the effect screen, and then tapping the effect takes you right to that channel or bus that uses that effect. So the effect screen is basically a shortcut. Again, really easy, as long as you're not expecting it to be like the X32. Another interesting thing is that there are no effects returns. This is great because you're no longer limited to only using four different effects that are accessible to all of your inputs. Looks like on the wing, you can use all 16 buses for effects if you want to. Sounds a bit excessive, but hey, maybe it's not. Let's wrap this up with a question you're probably dying for me to answer. What does everything feel like compared to the X32? 
Well, surprisingly, the faders feel about the same. I was hoping they'd feel a little smoother, a bit more premium, but honestly, can't tell much of a difference. The buttons feel a bit nicer. They are firmer to the touch and have a flat surface, which I do prefer over the beveled surface of the buttons on the X32. Now the knobs, that's where you tell the biggest difference. They're as smooth as butter on the wing, and there's a little more resistance, which makes fine tuning easier. Too bad I didn't use them much since everything can be done on the touch screen. So is it worth the upgrade? If you need a new mixer, I would choose the Wing over the X32. The extra $1,200 to get a touchscreen, simplified routing, and eight more inputs, totally worth it. On the other hand, if you have the X32 and it's working for you, I would not upgrade. Because now you're talking about spending over $4,000 for the differences that I mentioned in this video. They're worth $1,200, but not worth $4,000 in my opinion. But hey, the choice is yours. And whether you decide on the X32 or the Wing, I've linked both of them below where you can grab them on Sweetwater and support our channel in the process. If you've never ordered from Sweetwater, do yourself a favor and make your next purchase there. They always have the best pricing and their, their customer service is outstanding. Of course, your mixer is only as good as your ability to use it. You can master either, either of these mixers quickly with lifetime access to my online course. Learn more about X32 Mastery or Wing Mastery using the link in the description. And hey, if you'd like to watch me create a mix from the ground up using the wing, join my inner circle. You'll get a whole lot more than just one video. It's where you get the ongoing support that you need to thrive in audiovisual. Subscribe to Inner Circle using the link in the description.